Welcome back to another video, guys. New week, new topic. This is, I think, the most important topic we've ever talked about. I got cystic fibrosis. See, I've got cystic fibrosis. Welcome back to another video, guys. This week is transplant talk. So, so, so important, guys. This video I've been looking forward to for a long time because I think it is a huge, huge factor for the CF community. Um, and I really don't think a lot of people have a good mindset about it or um, have a good perspective on it. Um, tell you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go over with you guys what I think you need to know about transplant. I'm going to go over with you how I feel about transplant. And then we'll wrap it all up and get you guys on to the next week. So, one, what is transplant? You guys already know, I'm sure. CF-wise, your lungs get so scarred to a certain point where you have two options, right? You can either die or you can get a transplant for new lungs. Now, with that in mind, guys, that does not mean if you get a transplant and you have new non-CF lungs, that does not mean you no longer have CF. CF is part of the DNA in your body which means it's still there, which means it still affects other things, such as if you have sinus issues because of CF, those are still gonna be there. If you have pancreatic insufficiency to take enzymes to digest food, that's still gonna be there. Uh, if you have problems with your liver, if you have problems with your GI, most of that stuff will still be there. So from my understanding, guys, I do not have a transplant. These are, well, this is not my lungs, but you know what I'm saying. These are my lungs uh, that I was born with. So. Um, that being said, when you do get a transplant, you do have other advantages. You don't need to do breathing treatments anymore. Um, you know, you don't have the shortness of breath. Uh, you know, you hopefully have a very high, uh, FEV1, lung capacity, lung function. Um, but that being said, guys, transplant is not a fix. Transplant is a exchange for other issues. So you guys might already know but you have to keep your immune system down when you get a transplant because you do not want your body to fight off those new lungs and reject those new lungs. That's what rejection is. If you guys read about rejection for transplant, um, your body will fight off those new lungs because they're a foreign object. They're not what you're born with. So your body thinks, I need to get rid of these, fights them off, and that's what goes into rejection. Now you guys can imagine what happens if your body rejects your new lungs you might be able to get a second, maybe a third, but usually maybe a second lung transplant, or um, it's gonna be the end for you. So not to be morbid at all, guys, not to be harsh on this topic, but I really do think harsh is the way to go, to be blunt about it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything in this video. Um, so that being said about transplant, you guys get it, right? You, you, know, you get to a certain point with CF, you either can get one or you don't get one. If you don't get one, you live out your days, how you are, you might get worse, whatever, but you know, you're coming to the end stage of CF. If you get one, you know, hopefully everything goes good during surgery, you make it through, you know, afterwards you have to really take care of yourself, you have to constantly suppress your immune system with anti-rejection medication, um, as well as prednisone, and uh, you know, that causes its own issues all by itself. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, it can be several issues with that you can read about, because I don't want to tell you something that might be false coming from someone that has not had a transplant yet. Um, I have been evaluated for a lung transplant. I've started the process and I actually got told I was too good for a transplant. Go on home, thank God. And then uh, from that point, I use that as fuel to better my body, better my lungs and get to where now my doctor says he doesn't think I'll ever have to think about that, especially with the newer medication coming out. So that's freaking awesome, guys. So. The reason why I think that is awesome, this is where it gets harsh. Transplant, guys, essentially is a death sentence. Now, that does not mean, you know, if you get a transplant, you're choosing to die. What that means is, as we know it in society today, if you get a transplant, your body will reject those lungs at some point. And I think the longest living, I might be wrong, but I think the longest living lung transplant survivor right now is 24, 26 years since they've had the transplant. So they've had their, their new donor lungs for that long. Um, 
which could, I mean, don't get me wrong, guys, it is a miracle. It is a freaking awesome that we can get to an end stage disease such as CF and we have the option to get lung transplant and live longer, right? Like, we are already um, being blessed with that. So, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying transplant's a bad idea, I'm not saying it's a terrible thing. It is a great thing, but you have to keep in mind what that means, guys. There are so many, so many CF patients or people that I know that are like, oh, I feel like crap. Like, I just, I need to get a transplant. I need new lungs. I need to feel better. They want, you know, in today's society, now, 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 right? Like, that's how technology and everything has taught us and social media and all this stuff. We want constant feedback. We want constant reward. And so as soon as, you know, they feel sick, they want a transplant. I knew someone with 70% lung function talking about transplant. Hell, like I'm at 40 and there's no way I want a transplant. So um, that being said, guys, normally we're about 25%, 30% lungs. Uh, lung function is when the transplant talk starts to happen. Um, you know, there's also people I know with 17% lung function that have not had a transplant. So um, don't get me wrong, it's not something that you have to do at a certain percentage, it's just kind of when it starts talking. But what do I mean by it's a death sentence, guys? That means that your body's always going to reject those lungs. So you got to understand how old you are, right? And you got to understand your goals and your dreams and what you want out of life, guys. Because if you are a teenager and you have 50% lungs and you want a lung transplant, that's fine. But keep in mind, if you only live right now, right, with, with medical advances and the way science is right now, we have no way for your body to always accept those lungs, right? It's always going to try to reject them. And that's why you take the anti-rejection medication. So if you're a teenager right now and you want lungs, if you need them, that's one thing. But if you want them, that's totally different because guess what? You will probably never, ever see your kids grow up or you'll never make it to be a grandparent. Because think about it, guys. If you are 18 years old, right, and you only make it 20 years with your new lungs, 28 plus another 10, 38, you're never going to see 40. You're never going to see 60. You're never going to see 70. You're never going to get gray hair. So what I, what I want to get across to you guys is lung transplants are awesome, a miracle, a blessing for someone that really, really needs them. But you have to understand when you need them is, hey, you're going to die soon or you're going to have a second chance at life. You do not need them just because, oh, I can't run down a soccer field like I used to be able to. Oh, you know, I had a lot of sick days and, um, you know, I really hate that. Or, oh, I'm in the hospital, you know, a couple times a year with, with CF exacerbations. Like, I get it, guys. I get CF sucks. I get you're going to feel crappy some days. I get you're going to have a lot of hospitalizations. Hell, I had 30 hospitalizations throughout the four years I was at college. So I understand it, okay? But think long term. If you can wait to get a transplant and keep your native lungs you were born with, you might make it to where we get a medication out where you never have to have a lung transplant, right? You might be able to see your kids grow up. You might be able to see your kids have kids and you'd be grandparents. You might be able to work all your life and retire, or not even work all your life, but you might get to that point of retirement and get to just see all the experiences in life and all the stages of life. It's so important that you try to prolong a lung transplant as long as possible. Um, and of course, you know, there's uh, nothing wrong with once you get down and you say, look, you know, I only have a year to live or two years to live. I think it's important to start looking at lung transplant. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. But if you are a teenager or in your 20s or even in your 30s, don't rush a transplant just because you feel bad. Just because you want to feel better so bad. Even if you get a transplant, you don't know that nothing else is going to happen and you're going to feel better. I've even heard of one story where um, a CF person got a transplant and it actually developed lung cancer um, because of whatever happened with that donor before. But you know what I'm saying, guys? Is you are trading with something. You're trading one set of problems for another set of problems, realistically. Um, and yes, you can hope that that new set of problems isn't as bad and you feel better. But you don't know that that's going to be the case. So uh, just don't rush into it. That's the one thing that drives me nuts, and I see a lot is, um, you know, young people rushing to get a transplant 
and I don't think they really comprehend or realize what might happen or what they're doing because they want to feel better so bad. Another thing I want to bring up is, um, I don't know if Ashley mentioned this or anything like that, but Ashley kind of came to us and, and kind of voiced that she, you know, she was having some hard feelings uh, regarding lung transplant. Now, she was on the list at one point and came off of it. Um, but with that in mind, guys, if you're on the list for lung transplant, okay, that's one thing. But you get good enough where you can come off that list don't look at that as a bad thing. I understand how that can be uncomfortable. I can understand how that can be scary. But think of it this way. Dogs. Okay, but think of it this way, guys. You are now good enough to come off that list. You are now good enough to be able to prolong that transplant and possibly uh, you know, make it to where a medication comes out where you never have to worry about transplant. You know, you can you can even you can get better with CF or you can at least maintain where you're at and not have those sick days and not have those exacerbations. So that's a really, really, really good thing. And if you get to a point where now you're off of the list, but you know, maybe in a year, maybe in six months, maybe in two years, you get bad enough that you have to go back on the list. Keep in mind, you don't start at the bottom, guys. That's that's one thing about the transplant list is it's ranked, right? So it's ranked depending on how urgent you need the lungs, how severe your health has gotten. So just because you come off of it, right, and you're gonna go back on maybe in a year, two years, three years, you're not gonna start at the very bottom. You didn't lose any of that like waiting time, right, that you thought you might have lost because you came off of it. So it's really important to think about, guys, because you never, so I don't want ever to come off the list and be discouraged about that. That's a really, really, really good thing. And you know, heaven forbid, if something happens down the road where you need one again, that's okay. And if you need one really bad, you're not going to start at the bottom. You're going to start halfway or even further up the list. Uh, and the doctors know that and they take that into account. So, so never be discouraged about that type of thing. Um, but with all that being said, guys, just to wrap that up, I don't mean transplant as a death sentence doesn't look, you get a transplant, you're going to die. But what I do mean is if you don't get one, there's a possibility you're going to live until you're 90, 100 years old, right? Because there, we, one, nature might be able to let us do that, right? Two, might be medication that lets us do that. The point being is there's that possibility. So right now in life, right now in our society, if you get a transplant, that's not a possibility. You, your body will reject those lungs. If you don't know if it's gonna be six months from now, you don't know if it's gonna be 10 years or 20, 30 years from now. But right now the longest survivor, like I said, is 24, 26 years. So that's something to really, really think about because if, in my mind, I literally jumped because Ralph is so ugly. He scared me. <laughs> this is Amanda picking up Ralph. So, next step is, am I going to get a transplant? What do I want to do? Because you, uh, you have the choice, right? You can get one or you can just live your life out how it is now. And um, I got to that road, guys. I got to that point where I had to get a lung transplant evaluation. I had to have those serious... Uh, thought and those um, decision making moments and I will say that it looks like hell <laughs> so all you guys that have you had one and you post on Instagram uh, bravo it's it's uh, it looks like hell and I'm sure it will be but ultimate decision is yes um, of course I want to prolong my life of course I want to experience more uh, moments with my family and my friends um, and it just amazes me now, you know, I work from home and, and uh, I've built my career and I'm able to work out. I'm sure you guys have seen pictures of me working out and stuff. Um, I've been able to do all that with 40% lungs. So the idea that I can get a lung transplant one day, if I get that bad, hopefully, fingers crossed guys, I don't ever get that bad, fingers crossed, I can maintain where I'm at, if not get better from newer medication. But if that day comes, it's actually really exciting to me, the thought that um, you know, I could be really, really, really bad. And I'm sure once I'm that bad, I'm going to feel like I've lost everything. But I can get a transplant, get better lungs, and I can even feel better than I do now. So right now I feel good enough to work. I feel good enough to work out. Um, yeah, I have my bad days. I have a lot of bad days, right? I feel crappy a lot. I feel tired a lot. But I'm able to get those that stuff done. And I'm able to enjoy time with my family and my friends. So... Having a transplant, um, I'll admit, you know, it's scary for sure. It's 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 a dreaded experience. But at the same time, 
I know that I have the possibility to, to be feeling even better and breathing better and be able to do even more things. And so I can't imagine if I'm able to do what I do now, and I'm happy with my life right now, um, what it would be like if I can do even more. I might, it might be terrible, right? I might have so much energy I don't know what to do with. But um, point being is, yes, uh, I for sure plan on going down that route if need be um, and uh, not rushing it at all. If I had the choice right now, I'm 28 years old, so if I had the choice to pick, if, if someone said, look, you have to have a transplant, right, um, at some point in your life, and you can pick when to have it, I would say, <laughs> you know, the very last day that I need it. So, you know, hopefully that will be not until I'm 50, 60 years old. But, uh, you know, the very last day when my lung function is so low that, you know, I don't really have very much quality of life. I can't do much at all. And uh, I would do it then and hopefully have another 25 years uh, to live. And hopefully that would get me to 85. My number my number, guys, is 83. I don't know why. That's my favorite number. It's always been. And uh, I want to at least make it to 83 if possible. But uh, anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on lung transplant. I know this is probably, probably a lengthy video. I've had a couple different takes because of interruptions. But it's an important topic, guys. It's really important. And I just don't, don't, don't rush into it. Um, it's not a good thing. But it's not a bad thing. But it is not a good thing. It's not a exciting thing it's 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 weird right because it's, it's it's exciting because it's something new it's exciting the possibility of feeling better and, and having a, a a more productive better life but it's not certain it's not guaranteed to us so therefore it's not a great thing it's not an exciting thing it's it's something that might have to be done in order to extend your life and that's okay um sorry for the length of this video and um Come back, I think, next week for another video. But anyway, guys, that's Transplant Talk. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is a good approach, if you think it's a good video. Um, if you guys are on the same mindset as me, I hope you are. But uh, let me know if you think I'm wrong or right or if you think um, I'm going about it the, the right way. Because I've thought about this for a long time. I want to do a video very bad on my own channel. Um, just have not gotten around to it and how I wanted to word it. So now, because of our channel, I'm kind of forced into doing it this week, which is fine. Um, but that's my thoughts on it, guys. So... Hope you guys agree, and I will see you guys next week. Hashtag, stay salty, guys. See, I've got cystic fibrosis.